Hey everybody, it's Tony from Appalachian Dual Sport, and I wanted to do a quick review of this handheld stabilizer from Zhi Yun. I think that's how it's pronounced, or Zhi Yun, which is uh, Z H I U Y U N. It's the Smooth Q three axis stabilizer. Got this at Best Buy. Um, it was 139 bucks. So when compared to any of the offerings from GoPro or DJI, it seemed like a uh, exceptional bargain. Uh, when you get the when you get the unit, you open the box, and all you've got inside it is this neat little case, which kind of looks like a small, tiny little guitar case. And uh, trying to do all this one-handed, you get the strap that I've already attached, and the unit <clears throat> is neatly packed in there. And um, Actually, when I got it, I didn't have to charge it or anything. It was good to go. The only other thing that came with it was this uh, cord and the instruction manual. And when you pulled it out, all you got to do is press and hold down this button. Light illuminates, and boom. It's ready to spring into action. Um, of course, there's no camera on it now, so it's, it's out of balance. But this unit itself is designed to hold either a GoPro or a um, or a smartphone so I've got both and use both to do filming I'm using my phone right now to do this uh, video I got my little GoPro 3 black right here for uh, demonstration purpose so uh, we're just looking at the interior of the box the case sat in here and then the strap was up here and the uh, cord was down in this little cutout and the instruction manual I think was on this end anyway just a standard little paper box. Can't expect too much for 139 bucks. But uh, let me start with the instruction manual. This is the third, first thing I got out uh, when I got the uh, unit because I wanted to know uh, if I needed to charge it or what have you. So like most things uh, made in China and written in China, uh, this instruction manual kind of sucks. Um, when I started reading about the battery and the charging, it was just basically talking about uh, almost like there was a removable battery, that there was also a charger included, and that you're only to use the Zhi Yun charger, and don't overcharge, and don't use some other charger because it might, you know, burn your house down, whatever. But uh, uh, it turns out, you know, there is no charger. Uh, you just use the USB, included USB cord, and you plug it into there and you use uh, any compatible uh, wall charger that you might already have for your smartphone or something like that. Now there is another mini USB um, port on this unit and it's in the back here uh, and that's for basically you can connect that to your telephone so you can use the internal battery on the stabilizer to charge your smartphone. Uh, I did look through the specs I did look through the specs in the manual to try to figure out what kind of charger it needed and it does actually tell you, um, I believe in the back here, uh, what exactly, how many milliamps and stuff you need. And there it is, it says charging voltage 5, five volts, charging cur current 100 milliamps. Um, so I think that's for the, uh, I think that's for the actual unit. That might be, might be slightly different for the uh, actual stabilizer. Um, so anyway, yeah, moving on. Oh wait, no, here it is. Here it is. The uh, stabilizer. Uh, minimum 6.8 volt, standard 8.4 volt, maximum 12.6. Operating current, blah, blah, blah. You go down here, charging voltage 5 volts, charging current 1500 milliamps. So I guess I was just looking at the little remote uh, control. So. Um, that's what you need to charge this uh, handheld unit adequately. Adequately, so if you already have a cell phone charger or some other uh, mini uh, USB type charger that is providing five volts and 1500 milliamps, you're good to go. So the way you uh, set this thing up is that you stick your GoPro or your cell phone in this cradle, and kind of like a whole bunch of other types of uh, cell phone holders holders this is spring loaded and you just expand it and stick your phone in snug it up against this rubber bumper and you're good to go there is a adjuster right here that you loosen 
and you can slide this arm in or out to set the balance point. So when you've got your unit in there, you want it just perfectly balanced, um, you know, so that this arm is just balancing parallel to the ground and um, you can adjust this arm to get that done. Uh, you can also change the orientation to hold your uh, phone in either portrait or landscape mode by twisting this knob and, and turning this uh, the holder. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's basically how you mount it. So I'm just going to slip my GoPro in here and show you guys. Okay, so I got the GoPro mounted. I had to change the orient orientation. So now I'm going to push the button, hold it down until that solidly lights, and then it orientates itself. So now you're ready to go. And um, the way this unit works is it will actually um, has supposedly three different operating modes. And uh, we'll talk about those here in just one second. Okay, so we're looking at the stabilizer from behind. So this is how I'd be holding it if I was using the GoPro. Um, when you turn it on, it first defaults to what's called the pan follow mode. So as you can see, the unit is stabilized in this direction and in this direction. If my hand moves slightly, it will try to keep the GoPro stable. Okay? It's going to take some practice to get you perfectly working this unit. I, I've only used it really one time. It's my first stabilizer. And uh, I was uh, just probably took me an hour to come to grips with really how to try to work this thing to get a steady image. But as you can see with the pan follow mode, if I twist my wrist, right? If I twist my wrist beyond 90 degrees, the unit pans over, right? I twist it back, the unit pans over. Unit pans, unit pans. So you can sm smoothly follow objects by just twisting your wrist, okay? Now, on here is a mode button and I don't know if we're if I'm capturing this properly but there's a small mode button and also a panning jump thumbstick okay so if I'm in the pan follow mode and I use the thumbstick I can tilt the camera up and I can tilt the camera down tilt it up tilt it down it's kind of orientated kind of like a uh, pilot stick so you you push up, you go down. You pull down, you go. You tilt up. Now, if I tilt left or right on the stick, nothing happens in pan follow mode. Okay. So the way that uh, Ji Yun describes their modes is the default mode is the pan following mode, and it says the smartphone pans left right following the movement of the stabilizer, while the tilt and roll axes are locked. Push the joystick up down allows manual control of the tilt axis. Okay, so that's the default mode. And then you can go into locking mode, which apparently uh, requires a single push on the uh, mode button. And uh, this mode locks movement of all three axes to keep the camera still and stable. Push the joystick up down, left right allows manual control of the tilt axis and pan axis. So I have pushed that mode button. As you can see, the camera is locked in that position. So no matter what I do with the stick, twisting it as much as I want left or right. So this is probably a good mode if you're just walking along and you want the camera as stable as possible because you you want the camera to just float there in that one position locked as best you can. Of course, it's still going to go up and down when you move your arm up and down, but uh, now, it also said I can manually adjust the tilt and the pan by using the joystick. Now, this may be the best mode if you want just the steadiest shot. The next mode that they have is what they call just the following mode. So, if you twist the stick, it will pan. If you tilt too far, the camera tilts down. Tilt this way the camera tilts up. It'll just keep going to capture what you're looking at. So unlike the following pan, pan following mode, um, it, it didn't allow this type of thing. The camera would stay looking straight ahead as best it could. You can change the tilt axis. Uh, 
or the roll axis, sorry, with the, uh, with the joystick. So this is pretty cool. So it's just another option. And then you press the mode button. Uh, I'm sorry, the mode button, press the power button, it should return to the tilt follow, which it did. See how it's locked into position. It's not following the uh, tilt of the hand. Now I haven't owned the uh, stabilizer long enough, just a few days here, to check out the features of the app. But um, apparently it's got some neat features. You can control all the, uh, the panning and tilting via a, their smartphone app. It's their particular proprietary smartphone app. You can monitor the functions of the stabilizer through the app. You can uh, calibrate the app, um, the stabilizer. There's uh, gimbal setting screens which allow adjustment of various parameters. Um, and then there's this neat feature of object tracking. Now that is very interesting and that would be neat to figure out if that actually works and I will do a follow-up video uh, on, this, uh, on this image tracking uh, if I can get the uh, app downloaded and working on my phone properly. And there is a threaded screw at the bottom of the handle so you can mount this in a uh, tripod which is handy so then you can actually set it up, uh, track an object, walk away, maybe uh, you or your friend or whatever that you're tracking. Uh, so that is interesting, and I'll see if that works, and I'll report back to you, uh, everybody. And uh, then they have a couple pages here on uh, small um, remote controls and other things that are available at an extra cost. Uh, I did not see those at Best Buy. I don't even know if Best Buy carries these little additional um, items. But uh, so far, uh, I haven't owned the unit very long, but I am extremely happy with it. I think it works. So far, it's working good, um, and uh, I'll just keep reporting back if anything ever happens or changes, and I'll report back on the functionality of the app. So, great talking with you. See you soon.